Welcome back to the Chats and Recaps podcast with your host, Sammy. And Mimi. We're glad you joined us today. So, so let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you never miss an upload. Happy Friday. Welcome back to another episode of Chats and Recaps. And today we are doing something different and fun. Today we are going to be going onto a popular website for people to ask questions so that we can give our unsolicited answers to these questions. And we are in the category of hypothetical situations. So we thought it would just be funny to go down and read some of these hypothetical scenario questions and give our answers to them. Alrighty then. Let's say we could travel faster than the speed of light. Could we travel so far that we could see light waves from Earth that are millions of years old essentially looking into the past? That doesn't really make any sense to me. It doesn't because if you're moving forward in the speed of light, how can you see the past? Well, the speed of light is so fast that nothing can move at the speed of light. So if you were moving at the speed of light away from Earth, you'd be too far away to be able to see Earth. But it's a hypothetical question. Yeah, but you wouldn't... Hypothetically... Hypothetically, if if you could could see Earth from a from the speed of light or like a light year away, you wouldn't be looking at the past. Although they say that when you move, they say that when you move at the speed of light or when you're moving like so fast that time slows down for you, like you don't really age, but that does not stop time from moving other in other areas. Hmm. So if you were moving at light speed away from the earth and then you could see earth, you would just be seeing earth in its natural movement of time. You're not really looking back on the past, but it might feel different in perspective to you in relation to how you are moving in the universe. That Hmm. makes sense. I don't know. Because even if, like, let's say I shot out into outer space, I was moving at light speed, and then I was again back at Earth. Earth would still be moving at its normal pace, but it might be five years for me. And then I come back to Earth, and I may have not aged or whatever, so I might feel like it was less time than it was. But you can't go back in time. Like you're not going back in time. I know, you're not going time back. is still it's progressing. Just going forward. Exactly. So I don't know. So even if you are traveling in speed of light and you're out there, we're still traveling forward. There's so my no answer the past. My answer is no. You would not see the past. Nope. You would you still sure be would seeing it. the present. I have another good one. If you were to get rid of one thing in your life forever, what would it be and why? Roaches. <laughs> Why? Because they're disgusting. Well, thank you for saying that. (laughs) But it would have to be all like every species of roach. For me, it would just be all bugs. And I know that you can't get rid of all bugs. This is just hypothetical. Well, roaches have a meaning too. they do something in the soil. I don't really believe that that's true because there's other bugs. Germs. They're just germ spreaders. I don't know. I don't really believe that roaches serve that much of a purpose that other bugs can't take its place of in nature without roaches. And I wouldn't say all bugs because then you would also be getting rid of bees and stuff like that. And we all know how important bees are to the world. So why would you want to get rid of all bugs? Because you're including bees and stuff in that. So I would, I would choose one like species of bug, which would be roaches. And crickets and anything that looks like a roach. Some people like crickets, like the sound of it gives them Ew. peace. Well, some Not people it. like hissing cockroaches. Well, they're disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I could get a little bit more on board with somebody who likes grasshoppers and crickets than somebody who keeps roaches. I don't know. Just me. <laughs> this one is an interesting question. I've heard the phrase, knock me over with a feather. I was wondering, how fast would a feather have to travel to knock someone over? The speed of light. Yeah, because actually a feather coming at the speed of light to someone can actually kill them. It would probably knock a hole through them, you think? Yeah. Here's the thing. I any think object. Any object coming into contact with another object movement at the speed of light is going to... Would kill or destroy yeah, whatever it's, it's gonna going to So through. yeah, it's going to push you. It's going to push you. I mean, like away. at that point, the, would the feather be on fire, like in flames, like space debris? 
which reminds me of the girl who got killed by the toilet seat, by the flaming toilet seat. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I think a feather would have to move at the speed of light to kill somebody. That's my opinion. It could probably move slightly less fast and still kill them. But I'm going to say like speed of light is probably good enough. It's like they say if you go to the top of the Empire State Building. Now, a penny, you can hit somebody with a penny. I mean, yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit depending on how hard you throw it. But if you they say if you go up to the Empire State Building, which is probably why they caged it up and throw a penny, by the time it lands, it can kill someone. It's like a bullet. Yeah. Yeah, but that's because it's a like piece. A bullet, like, but that's because it's a piece of metal is already pretty dangerous. So you could throw it at someone at natural force and still hurt them. Yeah. And then you're adding like the force of gravity and the height and everything. By the time it gets down there, it's already moving like Full so force. with so much force. But like if you drop a weight. feather from the Empire State Building, it's, it's not going to kill gonna, somebody. No, it's just going to be like. Doo-doo. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be flying around like a piece of paper. But. If you could get that feather to move at the speed of light, I think it would kill somebody mm. for sure. I used to joke all the time about things moving at the speed of light. It's like, huh, imagine if we like high five at the speed of light, would it just create like a nuclear explosion or something? <laughs> like if you just high five someone right? at the speed of light, it's like <laughs> boom, explosion know, right? because of the force. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, got to be careful not to accidentally high five you at the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> Anything moving at the speed of light be instantly is a death threat. It would be. You're going to do this the one. This is interesting. What would happen if we made a nuke with the explosion power of a ball of nukes as big as the earth and launched said super nuke at the sun? Well, you would probably destroy the sun. <laughs> <laughs> well, or here's my question, because the nuke has to be stabilized right like a bomb a nuclear bomb has to be very carefully cared for and stabilized so as soon like when it reaches outer space and then it gets into a close enough distance of the sun and the heat the nuke would be destabilized would it then explode but then the question is can things explode in outer space but they can because you know things can explode on a planet because we have the force of gravity and like all these other things that come into play that explosions happen but then you go to outer space and like everything freezes so would the nuke even be able to survive outer space to make it to the sun so assuming we were able to stabilize the nuke to the point that it could survive conditions in outer space and then get it to travel in a trajectory to the sun assuming that the nuke can stay stabilized without exploding or being unusable When it does reach the sun, it would definitely explode because of the heat of the sun. And assuming it got close enough, it might cause the sun to actually explode if it was the size of the earth. Hmm. Although the size of the earth to the sun is very small. So I don't know if it would be strong enough to cause the sun to explode or maybe cause damage to it or cause solar flares or something. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Things hit the sun every day. I'm not a scientist. I mean, I don't know that things actually hit the sun because the sun is constantly setting off solar flares. So nothing really touches it because it would be burned. But it's also pulling in. No, because it would be burned before it even touched the sun because the heat of the sun would destroy anything that gets too close to it. So nothing actually impacts the sun because it's just a big thing of heat and gas. And it's constantly letting off these little like bits of fire, like solar Mm -hmm. flares. So nothing would be able to even get close enough to touch it. Why do we want to blow up our sun? And I remember <laughs> it was like a hypothetical situation. Like, could we? I mean, could we blow up the sun? Well, first of all, we can never make anything the size of Earth in the first place because we wouldn't be able to put it anywhere because it's the size of Earth. So that's like not even an option. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, it depends on the life of the sun. If the sun is getting bigger or smaller, which I believe our sun is getting bigger exactly so, so how is it getting bigger if it's not attracting something i think it's there's like different life paths of a star we don't i mean we don't necessarily know that is true or not but i think the sun is supposed the to turn into a super sun one of the longest sun. living stars in our solar system well we don't really know that for how sure how would from what we know because we really and don't we know really space. don't know anything when you think about it can you imagine not? I mean, the question a about the elephant would be so depressing. The question about the elephants kind of blows your mind a little bit, doesn't it? I know. There's a question that said if elephants did not 
we're in a live today and we just had to put an image together of them based off of their bones, would we have been able to place a trunk on a, on them, you know, because the trunk doesn't have any bones or something? And the, and someone was like, no, because how would you know that it had a trunk if there's no bones or anything to signify that the trunk was on their face? So then it makes you think about like dinosaurs and stuff like that and what we piece together, what they look like. Those probably aren't even accurate images when you think about it, because how do we know that there wasn't a creature back then that had a trunk or whatever or had other things that we just don't know about? Well, here's the thing, though. What about those uh, elephants from Questioning the entire times? universe? Woolly mammoth. Uh, the woolly mammoth. They gave it a trunk. So woolly there's mammoths be don't something. have trunks. I don't think they do. Do they? I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, they have trunks. It's on the cartoon. Does they have trunks. A- woolly mammoth. So it has to have something, Woolly vertebrae, it has to have something on the trunk, Have a trunk. like a spine. I think the, the trunks are made like spines. So those are bones. But the woolly mammoth is modeled after the elephant. And so I think you're able to place a trunk on it because the skeleton is so closely resembled to an elephant, they had to assume that it would also have had a trunk. What if it didn't? What if it evolved with the trunk? Don't know. We can only that assume. That makes me wonder, does an elephant trunk have bones? I think they have vertebrae. It's actually made up of 40,000 different muscles. Yeah, muscles Yes, yeah, so it's made up of bones. See? I mean, it's made up of muscles, not bones. Mm. That's why I said I'm that's pretty sure. Like, yeah, things. that's why I said I'm pretty sure the woolly mammoth, they placed a trunk on it because it is so closely almost like identical to an elephant that they would just assume it would have had to have a trunk because everything else on it is pretty much the same you know the tusks and everything like the whole design is pretty much Mm -hmm. that of an elephant but what i want to know is if they're just like the elephant if they're the ancestors of elephant why do they give the woolly mammoth hair did they just assume that it had hair because of the time period it lived in and they say that it was an ice age, they would have had to have some kind of fur or hair to keep them warm to exist in that time period. Weird. So here's a question. When you die, you meet your creator. You are given only one question and a 100% truthful answer. What is the question that you would ask? We already went over this. We asked them where they came from. Well, I would ask, where did you come from? How was you created? Well, that's two questions. My question would be, how would you, how were you created? That's my question. This is an interesting one. Can an all-powerful being create a stone they cannot lift? You know, because they're all-powerful. So that means that there's nothing that they can't do. But if there's nothing they can't do, they should be able to create a stone that even they can't lift. Or does it prove that they have... Does, would that make them then not an unstoppable being hmm. if they could create something that even they can't do? That's an interesting idea. Well, if they made a stone that they couldn't lift, then that wouldn't make them unstoppable now, would it? But also, if they're an unstoppable force, they should be able to do anything, even that. Oh, mine explode. Can't comprehend. Know, right? <laughs> Cannot compute. That's <laughs> like, whoa. Oh, my God. What if humans I completely to Earth didn't after read this right. Exterminating the dinosaurs? Huh? What if humans migrated to Earth after exterminating the dinosaurs? Are they trying to say we exterminated was, the dinosaurs and then we came to Earth? Um, excuse me, that was my concept. Well, it's somebody else's concept as I well. I said, I said <laughs> that I have said this for so forever. Obviously, you're not the only one thinking this. <laughs> I have said this for forever that how that we came from mars and that we had to come that we were moving to earth because earth was most inhabitable because as humans you know we destroy everything as we are destroying Mm -hmm. this earth as we will probably one day make this earth uninhabitable and so we had to find right killing it towards the end and so we had to find the next best place to go to and so we saw earth but we knew that the dinosaurs were here and we knew that they were too dangerous we couldn't coexist with them so we had to destroy them so we destroyed the dinosaurs so that we could move ourselves here and then live here in their place. So here's a question. If you could unite five countries together under your rule, what would they be and why? Russia, K, 
Canada, Spain, England. I have one more, right? Yeah. Uh, Sweden. Why Russia? And why? Well, because Russia is so big and dangerous that I would just need to have it under my control to keep it under control, you mm -hmm. know? Because I'd rather be on the side than against them. So that's why I would have to have Russia. And then Canada, because I love Canada. I think it's awesome. Sweden, oh, because Canada. Sweden because they're so smart with like clean technology and stuff like that. And that was something that I would have to pass through every country under my rule. So like Sweden knows what they're doing in terms of like clean energy and stuff. And they have a mm -hmm. lot of great ways that they run their country. So I would want that to spread to all my, all the other places. And then what else did I pick? I picked England, right? Yes. England. So we can get rid of the monarchy. <laughs> uh, Spain, because Spain is very powerful and beautiful. And uh, what else did I pick? What else did I pick? You said Russia, yeah, Spain, Russia, Spain, Canada, Canada, Sweden, England. Sweden oh, those were the five. England. Yeah, those yeah. were the five. That was it. I would do. Um, England could use some clean energy, for sure. Everybody could use some clean energy. The United States can use some clean energy. I know. So I would do China, Russia. Korea. Which Korea? There's a North and South Korea. Both. So then that leaves you with one other option. And, uh, what is it called? Oh my God, I forgot the name of that country. What country? Japan? Mm -mm. Scotland. Scotland. Mm -hmm. And why? Well, I would take China because it's so populated. Like, I don't want them gaining any kind of control whatsoever because it's just too much. Asia is huge. Two, um, Russia is a strong. I like how we both picked Russia. Because they have a strong army. Um, they're very strong and I need to control them. Um, <laughs> That's the same thing that I said. Both Koreans because. <laughs> you mean Korea? North and both South Korea. Korea because they're two strong military forces that I need to control. We wouldn't want Hitler coming out of there. And of course, Scotland, because it's so beautiful. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's open. It's green. It's just beautiful. And then we'll just use some of the concepts from Sweden in. Um, oh, but you didn't choose Sweden. No, I didn't choose Sweden. But we can have spies go into Sweden and check out how they live and then manufacture that all over the world. See, I chose Russia over needing to pick China or North or South Korea or anything like that just because I feel like Russia can be pretty much anybody. Yeah, but if you put them together, ha ha ha. Eh, I don't need to have too much power, you know, like just enough to keep balance. I do. I need just enough to keep ha -ha. balance, but not to be like in control of everything. I need to be in control of everything. Because I would be good in control of everything, still giving people freedom, but just making sure that mm, it's going to be a that. more peaceful thing than, you know, but still having that force to make sure that everyone is treated equal. That's me. No, no, no. This is why we're good at risk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have to. What? I had to laugh at this one. What is it? Why does Godzilla never have people stuck between his toes when rampaging a city? Okay, oh, number yeah. one, Godzilla doesn't have toes. He has claws. He is a huge lizard. <laughs> a stand-up lizard. You know, sort of type thing. <laughs> so they don't have toes. They have claws. But it's true. Why doesn't it stay stuck on the bottom of Godzilla's feet or in between his claws. First of all, Godzilla is huge and loud, and you will be able to see and hear him coming. Why would anybody <laughs> just be standing in a vicinity <laughs> of which they could be stuck possibly between his toes? That's true. I think the real question is it's why doesn't. Her. Well, Godzilla I think the real female. question is why does she not get anything stuck in her toes, period? Like mailboxes, cars, or like just little things stuck between the toes. 
That's the real nothing. question. Or, yeah, you know, what if she steps on something like really small? You know how when you step on a Lego and you're like, oh, like the most pain in the world. <laughs> why does Godzilla never step on a car or something and just be like, oh, my gosh, my foot. That I know. Hurt. <laughs> he just, she just goes, gosh, gosh, gosh. Right? Like, does that not Done. hurt your feet? I guess it doesn't hurt her. She is a lizard. Right? I'd be like, oh, it's a Lego. She's uh, like, freaking Lego. she's like in between a lizard and a T-Rex kind of thing. A T-Rex. I love Godzilla. I was a Godzilla and fan then again, from the we time to... I can remember Godzilla. So I even saw like the last Godzilla movie. Hmm. This is an interesting question. Could society function if everyone was good? I mean, the question is what... Okay, I say this all the time. Good is a perception of the person. Correct. But when you actually said that question, all I could think about was the Charmed episode where they did Utopia and everybody was good, but defined good. Yeah, that's why I said. Because they were like, ha ha ha, you can't do that. Cut their hand off or blow their head off or shoot them. And then they're like, huh. Gotta that's control just what happens. Yeah, that's just what happens, but you don't follow the rules. And they're nice about it. <laughs> but then again. I mean, they're they're good about it. I guess I think good the word good people to me is almost like, are you beautiful? Is in the eye of the beholder. Because yeah. good could mean anything. As I said, good is a perception. So could we ever have a true society that's full of just good people? Is that even possible? Because every person's definition of good is going to be it's, different. Yep, it's so different. I, could I guess the question is, still a good we, would, <laughs> we would have to live in a world where everybody's perception of good is the same. And then you could have a world full of good people that everybody would view each other as good and have the same. Would, they would all have to have like the same beliefs and viewpoints, which would mean you would basically have to have carbon copies of the same person, which is which never going to happen. It's not possible. Want, yeah. Then and then at the, the same, same time, I said, you no know, diversity. There has to be like everything in nature is balanced. You know, for daytime, there's nighttime, right? Like there's a balance in everything. So there is a balance of good and bad in the world. If you only ever were just around, quote unquote, good all the time, how would you be able to differentiate something bad, like when something bad happens? So it's almost like you need that balance of good and bad in the world. We need balance. I mean, you have to have balance, you know. Yeah. Here's so another question. I'm going to say there oh, would not society sorry. wouldn't even exist if everyone was good, because then what would even society be? I don't know. Well, like you said, it would be all carbon copy. Yeah, and it would there be will carbon be no copy diversity. the same person. It would just be the world wouldn't be really worth living in because some of your best experiences in life are seeing or doing things that are different to you, you know, having experiences. You can't have an experience if it's just everything is the same and everyone is the same and everyone sees things the same way. That's true. You wouldn't be able to experience different cultures. You wouldn't be able to. There would be no diversity. There would be nothing. Everything would just be, it would just be one person. Everything would just be the same and everybody would be repetitive on doing everything the same. And then I feel like that would probably just make you go crazy anyway. But you wouldn't know you're carbon copy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that like idea (laughs) doesn't make. It would just be the norm. That idea doesn't make sense to me. No. Next question. Before birth, you are given the choice of which family you will be in. What type of family do you choose? If you can choose what family you're born to. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we know that we didn't choose the family we were born to? Exactly. But let but if we, I would if say, we did, we don't remember. I'm going to say that I would be still in the same family because I probably did choose my family somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I would say I would still be in my family because I would just pick the most disruptive family there is. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know. Because when you're in a disruptive family, I don't know, you learn a lot of lessons. I mean, every, everybody's different and everybody's in their own, you know, I don't know. My family was very, had a lot of diversity in it. So everybody was different. And what I liked about my family is our parents didn't treat us all exactly the same. So we all each had a different personality and we were all treated that way. I was the lawyer. My (laughs) older sister was the right hand man. (laughs) You know, it's like everybody had their role in the family. So. 
This was an interesting question. What happens if you end up homeless while on house arrest? I'm like, <laughs> I would assume that I they would take you to box. prison. <laughs> <laughs> or you live in box if would you don't, become your resident <laughs> you would probably be put in prison i would assume you'd be put in a jail cell if you don't have a home to live in and you're you're technically house arrest you're still like under arrest you know like you're still serving a sentence so mm -hmm. if you didn't have a home to live in they would either take you to they'd take you to a prison or i don't know not even like those other places what do they call them like halfway houses or something i don't know if that's even the right term it is a halfway house that's where they would probably end but up in. Depending in a halfway the, house, well, you're permitted to go out into the world. You just have to be back by like a certain time. But it's kind of like being under house arrest. But house you're, arrest, you're you can't leave arrest. your house yes, you at can. all. Of course you can. I you, thought you couldn't. No, you can leave. They put this anklet on your, um, they uh -huh. put this anklet on your ankle. Because you're being course. tracked at all times. And um, you, they tell you the distance from your home you can be. Which is not much. It's not much, but... But it's kind of like the same as halfway house. They, you still have a distance. It's just they don't have ankle monitors. So, mm, well, I would assume you'd either go to prison or a halfway house. Yeah. If you have the power to grant anybody except yourself any power or curse, if you open a store, what powers would be in stock and what would the prices be? Wait, what? You have the power to grant anybody except yourself any power oh. or curse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you open a store, what powers would be in stock and what would be the prices? Yeah, I already said this. The power that I would sell, I would only sell one power. And it would be the power to know, like, to get the truth out of anyone, I guess. See, I would have different things in stock. Mine would just be the power to... Get the truth out of somebody. I would have different things because I would have to have a balance. I would have a shelf of curses and I would have a shelf of powers. Why would um, I sell, why would I give people curses? Well, some people want to be cursed. Just the power of truth because the truth will set you free. Hmm. This question says, what would happen if we redistributed the world's 1% wealth back to the 99% as a one-time reset? So if you took the... So if you basically distributed wealth evenly to everybody and you could just like one time reset and just everybody all of a sudden money is spread equivalently among everybody, I would say there would still give it some time and there will still there will then again be a 1% that is wealthy and there will still be a what 99% that is where the rest of the wealth is spread. Of course they would. Because some people know how to manage and grow their money and, and other some people, people don't. don't. <laughs> so the people who don't know how to manage their finances are still going to not know how to manage their finances. Yep. And the 1% is going to be the 1% it's again. It's just like when they hit the lottery. There's people that hit the lottery and they just become this huge, massive billionaire or whatever. Then there's people that hit the lottery and within a year or two have nothing. So they're back to square one again. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So you can give answer. everybody the same amount of money and other people will still walk higher up than other people because some people just don't know how to manage their finances. Yeah, so that's my answer to that. Mine too. Everything is free for 20 minutes, but you can't resell what you buy. What do you get? I get a house, car, new computer, top of the line recording equipment, including cameras and all that, because those <laughs> are all things I wouldn't want to sell back anyway. Or give back. Yeah. I would be on a shopping spree. Yeah. That's what I would do. I'd be like, house. House, New cars, equipment, helicopter, all that good stuff. Private plane. I ain't giving them back. No, I don't really need a private plane. I do. I want to visit everywhere without having to. So you know. Mm. If NASA chose you for a non-return trip to Mars, what would you take from Earth? Hmm, that's a good question. My pictures. Um, if NASA offered me a no-return trip to Mars, I wouldn't go. <laughs> but if I was forced to I go, go, I mean, if I was forced to go, I had like no choice. I would ask them if any of my electronics would work. They probably wouldn't. But I guess I would take clothes and, nah. and some memorabilia. I would take my pictures. I would take clothes and like some memorabilia, I guess. The only reason I would take yeah, my like pictures, some pictures is because, yeah, because I know the electronics aren't going to work when you go there. You're you're in mars i mean you don't even know what is going on there you can't take money because you don't even know if money works 
So I would just take my pictures, my memories. <laughs> Why would somebody ask this question? Say someone rushed to the hospital with a shot arm. If they told the front desk that they were a wanted criminal, what would the general procedure be? Would they still be treated? Of course, they would still be treated. They're not going to turn them away because they're a criminal. They're going to report that the, they are a criminal and the police will show up, but they're still going to be treated for their yeah. shot arm. They took an oath. Uh, that's how it works. Like, yeah. even if, I mean. They're not there to, to justify anybody. They're not there as judges or lawyers. They're just there to save a life. Yeah. I mean, they would report it to the police so the police could come collect them after they're treated and can be released from the hospital. Then they will be detained and put under arrest, but they're not going to not treat them for their wound. They can't do that. They have to treat. Mm -mm. Hmm. This is an interesting question. If the evacuation had been well performed and all lifeboats filled to absolute capacity, how many could have survived the Titanic? The answer is still only like a third of the people on the boat just because the lifeboats even filled at capacity was not anywhere near enough, enough to they didn't have enough boats yeah to put everybody on i mean there wouldn't have been a lifeboat. more deaths but there would have been less still died yeah there would have been probably less death but there still would have been a majority of people would have died just because i think when i looked it up it said that the lifeboats on the titanic could only fit maybe half maybe half i don't even know if it could fit half of the occupants of the boat on the lifeboats so you still would have lost over half of the life on the boat regardless. That is so random. If aliens landed in New York City tomorrow, what stocks would go up in value? I don't know any stocks that are reliant on aliens being Alienware. alive. <laughs> Alienware. <laughs> NASA? The computer. Alienware. I don't know. <laughs> uh, NASA maybe? Because then there would definitely be some big... Um, maybe like monetary pushes behind them to like even do more stuff as far as outer space goes because they're aliens i don't know and then i mean are they is it like we're the world aliens like they're going to kill everybody because if that's the case it doesn't matter if everyone was vegan how different would the earth be there would be less animal deaths we wouldn't be killing animals or abusing animals for production of food and we would eat plants and there wouldn't be there would plants. be more cows we would definitely need more land to grow we would stop food. destroying nature because we would be eating from nature like plants and stuff like that you were given one million dollars to help the world how do you do this i don't know my question yeah how do i get one million dollars to help the world <laughs> but you are giving a million dollars. So what are you going to do with so it? The question is, how do I help the world with one million dollars? Mm -hmm. um, I use it to... I don't know if one million dollars is enough to help the whole world, but maybe it can help small populations within the world. I would use it to try to make my world more energy efficient. Clean energy. I don't mm -hmm. know if a million dollars is enough to do that, though. But it's a great start. Yeah. And then um, I would do a clean GoFundMe living to fund the rest. <laughs> clean living, container homes, clean energy. Well, this is a dark question. Wind turbines. This is a dark, dark question. Why is it dark? Because the question is, if you had to bury the evidence of a crime you've been involved, I guess they want to say you've been involved in, where would you hide it? If I had to bury evidence? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Where would you hide it? In a junkyard. I don't know. In a a landfill. Landfill? Ew. I guess. I don't even know where there is a landfill. Um, well, it depends on what the evidence is. I would... Like a paper clip? I would put it... Flush it down the toilet. <laughs> right? <laughs> like the paper clip, I would flush it down the toilet. <laughs> uh, but this one is burying. So I would bury it with... Well, where would you hide it? Or would you bury, hide it? <clears throat> Whatever. Um, I would put it in a tank of acid that Here's would decompose thing. it beyond recognition. Whatever well, the item, what whatever is. the item is, I would put it in something it's like a gun or something. It's not gonna I would put it in much. something that would destroy. It, that would destroy whatever the, the item is. It'll destroy. Here's the thing. That's a fine line. No, to, there's like to, to answer this question because what if they're doing research? I don't know. So that when they commit the crime, they're like, "Hey, those Maybe. were some good ass ideas." Maybe <laughs> so it's I like, don't know. I don't know. 
Um, I would make a hole in the wall. I wouldn't commit a crime. I would <laughs> dump it in between the wall. And then I would seal up that wall, make it look perfect, like almost seeming seemingly. Or I would just get rid of the whole wall and, and just do that whole new wall with everything buried in it. That's a lot of work. And that's to a crime go you gotta through. hide. <laughs> that's a lot of work <laughs> to like make a hole in the wall and then you're gonna just like patch over the wall. Like, well, how would you even know where to make the hole in without the beams. destroying something? Yeah, but how do you know where the beams are? They have that, so that you don't beam hit them. tracker that you put on the wall and it tells you where the beams are. Oh, yeah. Now you're really helping somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Ixnay I would, on the question name. I would not commit a crime, to which I would have to hide evidence is my answer. And if I had to hide evidence, hopefully it's something small and I can just flush it down the toilet. That's where I would hide it. Or I put it in a tank of acid. I don't know. And the last random question is, or the last hypothetical question is... How would you complete this sentence? I can assure you I won't do it again because I won't. <laughs> <laughs> because I am a trustworthy person. I can. Well, you because already did it. <laughs> I would never lie. <laughs> it said, I can assure you I won't do it again because. I it learned be my because, lesson. Yeah. <laughs> I would say. It depends what it is that I'm saying I'm not going to do again. I can assure you. I won't do it again because that shit burned the hell out of me. <laughs> I can assure you I won't do it again because I'm in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't do it again. Right? I don't know. I can assure you I won't do it again because I just won't. Because I am trustworthy. Because it was a mistake. Because I don't know. If you were trustworthy, you wouldn't have been in that mess. Well, you don't. Here's the thing: so you don't even know what you're saying that you that you're not going to do again. That's why says finish the it sentence. It could have nothing to do with being trustworthy. It could that's just be something stupid. Yeah, it could just be. I like, assure you, I will never do it again because I already lost a leg. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I lost a finger. I lost an arm. I, lost, ah. I can assure you, I would never do it again because it, it was terrible. <laughs> I would never do it again because I almost drowned. I would never do it again because it was awful. I would never do it again because it caused a huge hole in my wall. I would never do it again because I almost died. I would never do it again because I already got a ticket for it. Oh, God. Yeah, that doesn't stop people. I would never do it again because now I know what is right and wrong. What if all land and earth was sand? That's so random. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Somebody posted the question. I know the other one was supposed to be the closing one. But when I saw that, I was like, what the heck? What if all of Earth was sand? Yeah. Like nothing but sand? What if all land and Earth is sand? Well, all land and Earth is sand. Because if you dig well, further dirt. enough, you end up digging up sand. Where? Anywhere. It no, matter. you dig in dirt and you get more dirt. No. You actually, if you dig, dig, Where? dig, dig Show me you the start evidence. getting sand. And then from Give there, me it the starts evidence. getting turned um into clay give me the evidence of i can't sand. give you evidence where where does it ever where does it say that when you dig far enough there's only ever just sand i don't know look it up but you're saying it like if it's a fact so where did well, you read this fact well or where did i didn't you learn? read the fact i learned so why are by you digging. see you just make stuff up man no i learned and you by can't digging. you can't count because florida is just i, I wasn't in florida sand. i was in jersey is is this was in Jersey when Just we were in school. Just because the specific place you dug was sand does not mean that there's sand everywhere. Well, it was it. It's like shocking to me how you state these things like our, they're fact when it's based off of one fact, little experience. It's no, my fact. That's not how. Well, you can't that's say my that. fact. You shouldn't state things like they're fact when it's based off of one little thing that fact. you did one time. That's not a fact. It's you my can't, fact. You can't make a blanket statement like, oh, well, under everywhere in the whole earth is just sand. And I'm like, really? Where did you hear that from? Oh, well, I just dug in this one spot and hit sand. So it must be like that everywhere in the whole world. That doesn't make any I sense. I didn't dig in one spot. I already told you. Well, did you go all over the world and dig really deep holes in many places throughout the world to no, find I'm not oh, an everywhere? Exactly. So you can't make that statement. But if you look it up. It, it, well, why don't it you look it, it up down. and tell me if, where that is? Didn't you ever learn the breakdown of the, the worlds? Yes. It's called mantle, crust, magma, whatever, the layers of the earth. Exactly. So underneath the earth is really just It's like magma. layer of skin. No. 
Well, the, I could tell you there's nowhere where it says sand is dirt. Okay, first off, when it's giving you the breakdown, nowhere do you read dirt. It gives it the scientific name for each layer. And it's not sand. What are the layers of Earth? The layers of Earth are topsoil, mm -hmm. alluviated horizon, subsoil, parent material, and bedrock. The Flintstones? Nothing about sand. I had to learn about this in school. Everybody has to learn about it in school. It's the layers of the earth, the layers of skin. We all had to learn it. Did you take health class? Yeah. Crust, mantle, outer core, inner core, planetary core. Blah, Break it blah, down blah. to English lingo. Crust, upper mantle, mantle, outer core, inner core. It's the earth. But nobody's ever dug all the way to the core, so. I'm sure Who's somebody say? has. I'm sure somebody has. There's archaeologists out Nobody there. Nobody has do. ever dug to the center of the earth, all the way to the center. Nobody has done that. Now, there's a movie called Journey to the Center of the Earth where they go yes, to the is. center of the Earth. There's actually but nobody, three. Nobody has ever dug to like the center of the Earth because it's not possible. You have to dig past like miles and miles of Earth to get there. I think I saw something where someone was saying, oh, maybe the Earth's center isn't even actually magma. The center of the Earth may just be water. So who knows? Oh, that's why I think it's sand. Because... One of the layers of the earth is like sand, but it's not. It's a mineral. All right. So that ends our podcast talking about hypothetical random questions, crazy questions that we found on Quora and just giving our answers to them. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever you are currently listening to this podcast. We are also available on YouTube as well. You can subscribe to us there. And we hope that you're having a wonderful week, that you have a great weekend, that you are staying safe, happy, and healthy, and manifesting everything that you desire out of life. Amen.